Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to Tuesday's Literacy Lesson. We're going to start off with a little spelling activity. You were introduced yesterday to your new word list. You've got words that end in the suffix ants or antsy, and you've got abundance, brilliance, extravagance, relevancy. You've got dominancy, elegance, hesitancy, abundancy, tolerance, and vacancy. And what you're going to do today is in your purple book, you are going to write the definitions of each of your spelling words, okay? So you are going to need your purple book, you're going to need to be able to get onto an online dictionary, and you're going to write me 10 definitions. Pause the video, off you go. Okay, year six, let's have a look at the next activity that you're going to do. So we've been looking at our joined cursive script, and we've been looking at letters of the alphabet. So we're now on to I. So what I've done is I've scanned the text that you were going to be looking at today, and I have chosen at random some of the words which have the letter I in them. And you're, I'm gonna show you how to join the letter I, and then you're going to have a little go yourself, two lines of each of the words. So here we go. We've got hurricane, moist, rainfall, tropical, and beginning. Those are the words that we're going to look at today. So I'm going to start with hurricane. So I'll lead into the H. Then I've got U, double R, I, T, A, N, E. And then right at the end, we can dot the I. Okay? Now we've got moist. M O I S and a tall T, remembering that that S has got to be the same height as the other lowercase letters. Then at the end, dot the I, cross the T. Okay, then we've got rainfall, be a good way to practice those Fs. Okay, so I'll lead into the R A I N, looping the F. And then into the double L at the end, making sure those are nice and tall and the other letters are the same height if we can. OK. Then we've got tropical. So T-R-O-P. Remember that sits on the line. Then we've got our I that we can dot. Oh, this is Lexus. Like that. Oh, it's a little bit wonky off the side, but there we go. It's let me let me dot it in the end. Okay, and then finally we've got beginning. Okay, so lead into the B, E, remember that loop G into the I, into the N, then another I, another N, and another looped G. And then finally we can dot. So underneath your spelling definitions, you are going to do two lines of hurricane, two lines of moist, two lines of rainfall, two lines of tropical, and two lines of beginning. I'm looking forward to seeing your beautiful handwriting. It really is coming on. Well done, Year 6. Pause the video. Off you go. OK, so let's have a little look then at what we're going to be doing today. So you are going to need in front of you your reading book today because we're going to be looking at a text and we're going to be doing a little bit, a little bit of a challenge with a little bit of writing towards the end. OK. You're going to need page 12 of that book and it's best if you've got it in front of you. I'm going to click it onto the screen in a minute, but I'm just going to explain the task that I want you to do. So you are going to read page 12 in that booklet and it's loads of different facts about hurricanes. All right. And what I want you to do is linking back to last week. If you remember, we looked at bats and owls and you chose an animal of your own to create just a little bit of factual information. And you had to make sure it had a title, some sort of subheadings and bullet points. Well, this piece of text has got bullet point after bullet point after bullet point, but they're a bit sort of random. So the first task I want you to do is to have a little look, read it really carefully. And then I want you to see, how would you organize those facts so that they made a little bit more sense, okay? So in your purple book, you'll simply write down, what would you call 
your uh, your piece of information, your nonfiction text. So in in the book, it's called uh, All About Hurricane or Facts About Hurricanes. Then what would be each of your subheadings? I'm not asking you to write the bullet points in there, but I just want you to think, right, OK, well, that bullet point, that bullet point and that bullet point will link together and go underneath that subheading and so on. OK, it'll make a little bit more sense when um, we have a little look at the, the text. But starter activity, reading through and you're going to make sure that you've thought of your own heading and some subheadings to organise the facts. So let's have a look at page 12 so you see what I mean. So here we go. We have got lots and lots of facts. It says hurricanes are huge tropical storms uh, which form far out at sea. Sometimes they reach land where they can do lots of damage. And we've even had them in the UK. Hurricanes are very common in some parts of the world, particularly America. But fortunately, they don't often affect the UK. That's why they make big news if they do. This text is full of interesting facts about hurricanes. So it says, hold on tight, gang. And we mean super tight. And a little bit of fun there because it's about the idea. Hurricanes are really strong winds. And uh, if you got caught up in one, uh, you would be uh, in a spiral. Because we're about to check out 10 facts on one of nature's most powerful forces, hurricanes. So hurricanes are giant tropical storms that produce heavy rainfall and super strong winds. And then it tells you how they form. Then they talk about rotating around a centre called the eye. Then he talks about that they uh, occur out at sea. And then he talks about spiralling winds. OK, and then he talks about rotating in a clockwise direction and then he talks about um, storm surges and all sorts of things. So you can see that they sort of jot, dot about a bit. So it talks about one thing, then there's another fact, then there's another. So your opening task is how would you organise that so that it makes more sense? So, for example, um, would you call it uh, facts about hurricanes or perhaps a little bit of alliteration, horrid hurricanes? I don't know. And then um, your subheading, you might uh, you might have what is a hurricane? You might decide that something else is uh, how are hurricanes formed or where are hurricanes formed? OK, so what subheadings would you have for those? All right. So purple book. Decide what your title is going to be. Decide what your subheadings are going to be so that you would structure that a little bit more carefully. OK, pause the video. Have a go. Off you go. OK, year six. So it's time to have a little bit of a closer look at the text. Now, if you have that in front of you, I have to lift it up a little bit more, then it's much easier and it's uh, you're able to follow it as we're reading it through. So there is some technical vocabulary in here, but I think lots of them you're going to be able to use the text to and, and see the word in context to be able to define the words. And if you can't, then what do we say? We can go on to an online dictionary or thesaurus and that will help us. OK, so. It is hurricanes. We've talked about the beginning. I'm just going to sort of go through the text here now. OK. Hurricanes are giant tropical storms that produce heavy rainfall and super strong winds. Hurricanes fall over warm ocean waters near the equator. And we've in geography, we had a little look at the equator. Remember, that's that imaginary line that goes around the centre of the Earth. The warm moist air above the ocean surface rises, uh, causing air from surrounding areas to be sucked in. So the warm air rises and it sucks all the other air around it. And then this new air becomes warm and moist and rises too. And it begins a continuous cycle that begins to form clouds. The clouds then rotate with the spin of the Earth. So we know that the Earth spins. So these clouds start to, to whirl. If there is enough warm water to feed as the storm, a hurricane forms. So if the water is warm enough, then the hurricane starts to form. 
hurricane rotate around a circular center called the eye, where it is generally calm with no clouds. Surrounding the eye is the eye wall, the most dangerous part of the hurricane with the strongest winds, thickest clouds and heaviest rain. Most hurricanes occur harmlessly out at sea. However, when they move towards land, they can be incredibly dangerous and cause serious damage. So it is, you know, people, when you hear a, a hurricane warning, you know that you need to get to safety. The strong spiraling winds of a hurricane can reach speeds of up to 320 kilometers per hour, strong enough to rip up entire trees and destroy buildings. So bad news. In the Southern Hemisphere, hurricanes rotate in a clockwise direction. In the Northern Hemisphere, they rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? So Southern Hemisphere, they rotate clockwise. Northern Hemisphere, anti-clockwise. This is due to what's called the Coriolis force produced by the Earth's rotation. When a hurricane reaches land, it often produces a storm surge. And this is when the high winds drive the sea towards the shore, causing water levels to rise and creating large crashing waves. Storm surges can reach six meters high and extend to over 150 kilometers. So they're really dangerous too. Hurricanes are also called cyclones and typhoons, depending on where they occur. In the Atlantic Ocean and Northwest Pacific, they are hurricanes. In the Northwest Pacific, uh, sorry, the Northeast Pacific, they're called hurricanes, sorry. In the Northwest Pacific, they are typhoons. And in the South Pacific and Indian Ocean, they're called cyclones. They're all the same thing. It just depends which ocean they form over. Then they, they have a different name. The largest hurricane on record is Typhoon Tip, which occurred in 1979 in the Northwest Pacific with a diameter of around 2,200 kilometers, it was nearly half the size of the United States. Wow, that must have been absolutely huge. Hurricanes are given names by the World Meteor Meteorological, oh, get my teeth in to say that one, organization, the WMO, we've got a little acronym there, so that they can be distinguished. So distinguished meaning you can set, you can say, well, that was that particular hurricane. This happened on this particular hurricane. So, so that you can separate, you know, which hurricane you're talking about, they name them. Just like we started to name storms, haven't we, in the UK. Each year, tropical storms are named in alphabetical order according to a list by the WMO. That name stays with the storm if it develops into a hurricane. The names can only be repeated after six years. So if they start to run out of names, they can start looking back and using the names again. OK. So we have got. So this is an article from www.ngkids.co.uk. OK, and that might be important later on. Let's have a little look then. At the questions. So why is the word super written in italics in line three? So if we look at line three, it says uh, hurricanes are giant tropical storms that produce heavy rainfall and super strong winds. So what's that telling you about the winds? Are they, uh, you know, are they strong winds? Or are they really strong winds? So what is that trying to do? OK, what is adding that super in italics? What is it trying to tell you about the strength of those winds? So why don't hurricanes form over cold oceans? So think about what it tells you. All right. What do hurricanes do? How do they form? So you need to look at this particular little section here that tells you how hurricanes form it's the, the the second bullet point okay that you need to look at then who do you think the text is aimed at how can you tell all 
All right. So look at who the it said the article was formed. Uh, sorry, it was uh, for down at the bottom. Remember, I pointed it out just recently. And then what else tells you? It talks about super strong winds. OK, and the beginning sort of hang on tight gang and we mean super tight. So who do you think that is aimed for? And again, don't forget, refer back to the text. What kind of words are being used that tell you that that particular group of people would be really interested in it? OK, so think about the style of writing. So then why do you think the author uses a lot of exclamation marks in this text? All right, so we're getting lots and lots of really, I think this sort of uh, the facts Hurricanes are just so powerful, and it talks about heaviest, thickest clouds, heaviest rain. Uh, we've got they can rip up entire trees and destroy buildings. So I think it, you know, think about what's it trying to emphasise. So why have we got those? Um, uh, why have we got those exclamation marks? Uh, think about where they occur. What are they telling you before the exclamation mark? Okay, so have a little go at that one. Then we've got, what's the purpose of this text? You've got a circle one. So is it trying to persuade? So is it trying to persuade you to buy a, ty a, a typhoon or a cyclone or a hurricane? Um, is it trying to persuade you to an argument that hurricanes are the most powerful uh, winds? Is that the purpose of it? Okay, so have a little think about that. Inform, is it telling you lots of information about the, the hurricanes? Okay. And then we've got inform again. Entertain, is it trying to, you know, tell you lots and lots of fun ideas so that perhaps you could, you know, drop it into a conversation or make a Kahoot quiz out of it? Okay, so you could have a little, you know, something like that. Okay. So then... Uh, we've got entertain and persuade there. So what do you think out of those three, which would you go for? And then finally, on the questions, why do you think hurricanes are more dangerous on land than they are out at sea? So think about what's on land, okay? What are the lots of? Think about buildings, think about objects, think about people, okay? So why is it more dangerous if you've got these super strong, super, ugh, get my teeth in, super strong winds that are whirling away? Why do you think that it's then more dangerous? What can happen if these strong winds are whirling around? You know, imagine that happened in the, 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 the center of Mia. What could that do? OK, so uh, have a little think and lots of detail, please, in that last answer. OK, so when you've done that, um, we're going to have a little look at your challenge then. And again, I'm thinking back to last week. OK, and what I've done is I've put a board on here that you will need to come back to of different conjunctions okay those linking words because that piece of text is lots and lots of fun and there's loads of facts to it but it's sort of although it's fun to read it's not really a, 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 a in a case you know you if we were going to be doing a non-fiction text we would be asking you to set it out slightly differently OK, it's fun, it's entertaining, but let's have a look at can we make it a more serious article? OK, change the, um, perhaps change the audience. So perhaps uh, it make one for adults. OK, so we would be looking at those titles, those subheadings um, and, you know, perhaps keeping the odd bullet point here and there, but making it more uh for, for a, a target audience of adults. Okay, so to do that, we need to write in paragraphs. 
and we need to make sure that we have some cohesion going on that writing flows those bullet points uh, are very short in some cases or they've got quite long sentences in others so how can we sort of arrange and adapt thinking about what we did last week in our writing task um, how can we amend and adapt those facts and create uh, a really good paragraph using conjunctions so that we get that cohesion going through so you will need to refer back to this and the text for your challenge so let's have a look at what your challenge is so you are going to create a little paragraph OK, I don't want the whole thing put into um, into, uh, you know, in, into a piece of writing. You're going to choose one of your subheadings. So I chose how do hurricanes form? OK, and my title is hurricane. And then I chose that section. Remember that paragraph that was about uh, how do they form? I think it was the second bullet point. OK. So what I've done is I've, I'm making a paragraph now. So I'm removing those bullet points. I'm targeting my audience for adults. And so I'm inserting now uh, some conjunction so that my writing is going to flow. So here I've done a little model. So how do hurricanes form? So hurricanes are enormous tropical storms that produce heavy rainfall and devastating winds. So that was that first paragraph I've just at first bullet point I've changed it just slightly okay remember it said super strong winds and so I'm thinking about you know that's a more adult type of word devastating okay they form over the ocean near the equator but how does this happen so a rhetorical question hooking my reader in okay because we're trying to keep them reading this paragraph so first I've got my first conjunction Warm moist air above the ocean surface rises. Subsequently, okay, so again, those in blue are my um, conjunctions. Air from surrounding areas is sucked in. As a result, another conjunction, this new air then becomes warm and moist and rises too. So I've changed the target audience. I've now created it for adults. It's a paragraph. It's not funky bullet points, okay, that you would enjoy if you were reading a little article. We're changing it. It's now targeting for an, for, uh, a, an adult. So I'm looking at the type of language I use. I'm looking at using conjunctions and I'm creating a paragraph of information. So you are going to, in your purple book, you're going to use your heading that you have decided and then you're going to choose one of your subheadings doesn't matter which one okay could be any of them and you're just going to select the bullet points that would fit in that subheading and then you're going to merge them together using really good vocabulary using conjunctions from the previous board so that you can get uh, you so that you can make a, a a really cohesive paragraph that's interesting for adults to read okay so good luck with your activities today i'm sure you're going to have a great deal of fun and wow hurricanes who knew they were that dangerous have a lovely tuesday see you tomorrow guys bye bye bye